Is Photoshop running slow for you? Chances are with the 2023 update, you may have noticed that Photoshop is running a little bit slower and it's also consuming more memory on your computer. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some settings that I use in Photoshop to optimize its performance when I'm creating digital art. So let's start off by going up to the settings and let's choose general. And these are some of the settings that I've put in place that I think makes a noticeable difference when I'm using Photoshop day in and day out. The first thing is under general, I turn off export clipboard. By default, that's turned on. And what that command will do, it will allow you to copy and paste from Photoshop into another application like Microsoft Word or whatever else you're working with. I almost never do that. So there's no reason for Photoshop to have that overhead turned on. So I've turned off export clipboard. Under file handling, I've set image previews to never save. Believe it or not, when you're saving a thumbnail preview, it does add to the time that it takes to write the file out onto your disk. And I try to give descriptive names for my files so I don't have to really worry about this image preview business. And if you're using a program like Adobe Bridge or something else, it will automatically generate those thumbnails in that particular viewer. So I almost always turn off never save the image previews. While we're here, it's a good idea to go ahead and have the automatically save recovery information. That basically means that if Photoshop crashes or it's kind of doing a spinning beach ball, that it will save your file and get you to a recovery state. That's a good thing to keep on because every now and then it does happen. Uh, okay, so then under performance, uh, you can set Photoshop's memory usage. And if you've used Photoshop for any period of time, you know that it loves RAM. It gives, you know, it takes whatever RAM that you give it basically. So I've set my RAM allocation to roughly 60% of my computer's total memory. If you're using Photoshop on a system that has say eight gigs of RAM or even 16 gigs of RAM, you're not really having enough headroom between the operating system and Photoshop to really work in a more efficient fashion. So, uh, and I'm also running into a little bit of that limitation with 32 gigs of RAM to, just to be totally honest with you, but I've set it right now to about 60% of my available RAM. The other thing that I also do to improve performance is I've lowered the number of history states. By default, this is 50. And that basically means uh, the history state corresponds to the number of undoes. So basically, if I want to go back and kind of make some corrections and have, I hit the control Z or command Z, um, it gives me roughly 20 undoes. 50 undoes takes up more memory. And, you know, the more undo states that you have, the more memory it's going to take. So... 20, I think is a good sweet spot. The cache levels and the cache tile size, those uh, are, you know, optimized depending upon, I've set mine to two and 128K. And the reason why I've done that is because I don't work with ridiculously large file sizes like raw photos and things of that nature. I work with file sizes that are anywhere between 5,000 to 7,000 pixels in size. I don't need a lot of you know large caches because the larger the cache, the more memory is allocated for that cache. And I really haven't noticed any performance improvements by setting the cache size to a larger value for the file sizes that I work with. Um, if we go down to scratch disks, this is important. Scratch disks are basically, they're a hard drive or a solid state drive. I have a dedicated drive that I've set up as a scratch disk. And what is a scratch disk? It's basically, if your computer runs out of available RAM, it will try to use some of your storage as a slower form of RAM. It's not ideal, but Photoshop will allow you to do that and you'll take a performance hit, but at least you can continue to work. I find it to be helpful to have a dedicated solid state drive that is used as a scratch disk. And if you're using the Creative Cloud Suite, Virtually all of Adobe's programs have this option where you can settle and choose a scratch disk. So having a dedicated scratch disk allows me to not have to worry about the, uh, you know, Photoshop using my internal hard drive as, you know, uh, slow RAM, especially if your hard drive is close to being full, 
Um, you can run into really bad performance issues where the, the computer appears to be throttling with everything that you do in Photoshop. So having a dedicated scratch disk is my recommendation. I have got a 500 gig set, uh, scratch disk, which is more than sufficient. And you can pick one of those up for about 50 bucks on Amazon. So total no brainer. Um, under technology previews, technology previews are what Photoshop uses when they're trying to roll out something new. And generally speaking, unless I have a really good reason for using a technology preview, like if it's gonna actually save me some time, I'll keep it on, but none of these settings save me any time. And I know where they are if I have to go ahead and use it for something down the future. So right now I've just deactivated all of these technology previews. And if there's a really good reason for me to use it, then I'll go ahead and turn it on. But usually, you know, these are also somewhat buggy. Their technology previews are basically rolling in some new features and they're not thoroughly optimized yet. So I just leave that stuff off. So that's how I've got Photoshop set up on my computer. Those setting changes I think are really, really useful. Just poke through this. And there are also other options here too that improve your quality of life. For example, you can choose under cursors, you can choose crosshair and brush tip other things that I think will make things look better. So you can control aspects of the user interface in Photoshop within this preferences dialog. Um, but I use it for primarily uh, customizing it for performance. So if you found this video to be useful, my name is Krishna. Please consider giving this video a like so other folks can find it. And I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.